happy Friday and welcome to the Collaboration Conversation, a listener-supported video podcast where Christian artists, entrepreneurs, and friends share about their upcoming projects and how they are using the gifts and talents that God has given them. To what end, of course, as always, is to share the good news of King Jesus. Today, we have a very special guest in store for you. His name is Robin T. Jennings. Robin has been a clergyman in the Episcopal Church for over 40 years. He has decades of experience encouraging churches and parishioners to cast a vision, to develop their personal life plans, and equipping them with the tools necessary to participate in the divine nature of Jesus Christ. He is the author of several Bible commentaries. My dad will be thrilled yes, to he hear will. about that. <laughs> and as well, he has authored three books on spiritual growth and renewal. Robin, thank you so much for being here and welcome to the Collaboration Conversation. Thank you, Sarah. Diane, thank you. It is very nice to meet you. Um, I always joke that, you know, typically we know the folks that, that we're that we're interviewing. And on, on rare occasions, we'll interview someone that, that I've been communicating with but have never met. But this is a first. We've never communicated at, at all, all <laughs> ever. Um, and, and but we're connecting. We're connecting. We yes. are. Um, there was a little, yeah, a little bit of technical difficulty on my part. That's okay. But, um, but yes, it's very nice to meet you. And as we get started, um, we'd love to hear about who you are and your family, and uh, just tell us a little bit about you. Where do you want me to begin? <laughs> the beginning uh, well, is there, at the very beginning, yes. <laughs> Long, far, far away. Yeah, that's yes. right. <laughs> you said I've been in ministry for over 40 years. I started to, you know, feel a little creak in my back. and <laughs> <laughs> Everything's just started to ache a little yeah, bit more. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, but in all seriousness, I, I grew up, uh, and I hate to say this, Diane, but as a Yankee on the north side of Chicago, <laughs> I'm from Ohio. I, I was born in Cincinnati, so we're good. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. So I and and loved it. It was the north northern suburbs of Chicago and uh, high school, and I, I grew up, you know, sports, sports, baseball, football, basketball, wiffle ball, swimming. You know, go it. Cubs. Yeah. You know, the cu- Did you someone say Cubs? Go Cubs. Well. That's when oh, I no. began to find. No, that's when I began to find my faith. <laughs> yes, yes. You had to become a believer and that's right. you know, hold out hope, and you know that's all funny. those kinds. But joy comes in the morning, you know, and, and we right. come Amen. back with a with a, a series. But I wasn't there. Uh, but oh, no, no, those were the days. Um, and then I actually went to college in in the central part of Kentucky, Center College in Kentucky. Okay. Um, where I met my little girlfriend. Then fiance, now wife, for fifty years. Oh my oh, gosh! Yeah. Congratulations! Congratulations! That's young. awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. So Good. we keep on going. Um, but with with all that said, part of uh, my development and growth really came. <laughs> I don't want to say late in life, but as more as I became an adult, I was I was strictly an athlete. You know, like sports. Um, didn't really crack a book. Didn't think that much i watched tv remember that was just coming out in my days yeah <laughs> we had tv we had color yeah <laughs> it was all very <laughs> exciting yeah <laughs> so with that said um i by going off to college i did learn how to read and write and Good. i fell in love so you start putting all those things together um after college graduation my wife went to frankfurt uh kentucky lived in lexington taught in Frankfurt. I went back to Chicago, worked in an Episcopal boys' home. By the way, I grew up as an Episcopalian, okay. which again was, um, well, I don't want to say this, more of an introduction to church, really, than it was to my faith. And, I, mm. and I'm not knocking right. the Episcopal church, but what it had was the liturgy, the prayer book, the formality. You all saw Queen uh, Elizabeth's funeral and I mean, yes. all that. Yep, that's, right. that's sort of the Anglican Episcopal church. Yeah. At its best, <laughs> but okay. it was a small, right. more suburban little church, and and but with still, uh, the hymns, the music, all that was very much caught up in that style. And yes. it, it, I'm not going to say it didn't connect with my heart, but it wasn't necessarily about Jesus as it must was more about the, the the format of the right. of the service. And then you went home mm-hmm. and play ball and play ball. <laughs> Watch TV. Yep, every day. We get that. <laughs> Life wasn't really changed, and we didn't even really think about that, or much less spiritual growth. But with that said, I, after college, I did come back, worked in an Episcopal boys' home, but it was downtown in Chicago, and it was tough. And those were really rough and tough years. It was, uh, 
you know, Martin Luther King's assassination, Vietnam, oh, yes. uh, the Democratic Convention. There was all kinds of things going on, not unlike cities today, but an awful lot of, not quite the guns, thankfully, right. but uh, still a lot of, lot of unrest. And mm. um, this home I worked in um, had, I was in charge of some of the seventh and eighth grade boys. They were all bigger than I was. They oh, wow. um, came out of backgrounds where they were classified as emotionally disturbed, but you looked at their files and, my God, who wouldn't be? You know, right. I mean, with the, the abuse, the drug, the, all the problems that they grew up in. Again, um, I would say, make your bed. And all of a sudden, we'd get in a fight, uh, as in a fist fight. Yeah, you know, right. I'm yeah. going, are you kidding me? I hadn't been to a fight since third grade. <laughs> right. Anyway, all, this all began to really break me apart, um, not necessarily physically, but emotionally and spiritually. I just thought, I, you know, I was thinking maybe I'd be a social worker or a psychiatrist or something like this. But there was a chaplain there uh, who I met with late into the night, many a times. And we talk and talk and talk. And, oh. and one night he said to me, you know, Robin, you ask a lot of good questions. Pause. <laughs> yeah. I said, you know, I don't know where to go with that. And right. he said, have you ever thought of seminary? Hmm. And I said, no, <laughs> to be honest with you all. Yeah, so right. here again was this, the kind of the door and the call being open is what we would call today a seeker. I mean, mm. he identified that within me and thought, you know, let's see if you can't get a response to some of these questions you're asking at a, at a much deeper level. So I called my then fiance yes. <laughs> prior to being wife and I said, Mary, I said, uh, you know, how do you like the idea of going to seminary? And she said, I thought maybe we'd go to church. <laughs> you know, what a great her, response. Yeah, but she fell in love with me. Mm, <laughs> yes. no, seriously. It was, it was, again, she actually was the, it was more the spiritual one. Mm. She came out of a Presbyterian background, young life. She, she had mm. the spirit and the Bible and the yeah. faith. And I really admired that. And we, as a result, became a, a team. And yes. in many respects, our marriage was built around the church. I mean, uh, excuse me, around the seminary and the church. Yeah. Um, it, so many people in, in the seminary told us, you know, wait, 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 you know, get a job, do something else. Don't go to, you know, I was then I guess 24 or something. Wow. But, you don't tell a 24 year old to wait. <laughs> right. <laughs> Who's about to get married, you know. Yeah, so, for sure. There we go. That that began the launching uh, of of the calling, really, for me. I don't want to say necessarily career because that sounds too much like a job, and it and it never really was as much mm. as a following of Jesus. Oh, oh, that's wonderful. We love that. And you've been in Kentucky ever since. No, I <laughs> <was> in- <laughs> incorrect. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> Let me start. <laughs> so after that, here you go. This is the rest of the story. My wife. We played tennis with the chaplain and his wife at, at the seminary. A mm-hmm. great guy, and uh, I could tell all kinds of stories about that and him and his wife. But she pulls him to the side and says, "Robin's thinking he we were we're going back to Chicago. I don't want to go to Chicago. <laughs> yeah. This is my wife. Yeah, you, know, you don't, you know, right do that." But she did it. <laughs> yep. So the next thing I knew, the chaplain calls me and we have a sit down and talk. And, and so he began to explore what would be possible. And of course, she was from Knoxville. But rather than put her back in her hometown, he sent us to Memphis okay. and, got us, and connected to Memphis, Tennessee. And that's where I served first at a cathedral. Uh, downtown St. Mary's Cathedral, which wow. again came out of the, if you recall, the, the Martin Luther King assassination was there in Memphis, and the right. cathedral was a big part of it. The congregation was split, the city, um, you know, all kinds of white flight sort of stuff going uh, on. It's, yeah. it's still all kinds of turbulence, but um, our job was reconcile, reconcile, reconcile. That's the word mm. we kept using and preaching yeah. and talking and, and teaching. Um, but one of the well, I, I can go on and on, but that really, there was a inscription on the altar at this cathedral that said in uh, Latin, Hosanna, uh, Alleluia, um, praise to the Lord. And I thought, w- what's that all about? I asked around and I found out after a couple of questions and <laughs> once again, kicking the tires, an old clergyman came up and started talking to me about 
what that meant and what it was was the last words of Mother Constance. Now, Mother Constance was a nun. I bet you didn't know Episcopalians had nuns, but we had nuns. Right. They came from New York to serve the population in Memphis. You ready for this? During the yellow fever. Oh, wow. Um, this was 1870. Yeah. The one in 1930. Yeah, this was okay. 1870. By the way, the Civil War was 1865. Right, right. right. Over. Yeah. Memphis, over. Memphis yeah. cotton, slavery. Yeah. The, the city was a wreck. Jeez. And, and then you throw this on top of it. Um, her order was serving the women and the orphans oh. and the dying. And sure enough, she got sick as well. And she died at age, oh. I want to say, 33. But the impact and the reason for telling this story, the impact it made on me, I carry to this day. I mean, wow. all of a sudden, right before my eyes, I'm looking at this big marble stone altar and it's alive. Wow, <laughs> you know? yeah. And and what she taught me is to do the word. Mm. Which brings us to James and then that final, not final, but that third book I just released. Okay. Well, uh, so, that? no, no, that, that was, was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, so how, how did you get from Memphis to Kentucky? Well, that's another story. <laughs> but tell it, it. What happened was the the minister there. Uh, little did I know, uh, he was a um, very old man. He was probably sixty. <laughs> you better be that's careful what, what you yeah, say. That's not funny. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm trying to be funny. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, uh, mature. Let's put it that way. But yes. um, he he was a legend in his own right, and uh, he was looking for an associate. Called me. Uh, got my name through. I had been attending various Christian ed conferences and things like that. And right. Kentucky and Tennessee, they're not that far apart. No, nope. not at all. Not at Except all. Maybe, maybe in basketball and football, but, we'll, we'll, <laughs> but um, what uh, what I did, my wife and I went there, and we fell in love with the church, the people, uh, and this minister was like a father figure to me in many respects, oh, yeah. and a mentor. Yeah. Which, by the way, is again part of the main uh, principles of this book I've released is right. is the emphasis on mentoring this next generation. Mm -hmm. Who's doing it? Right. You know, and this guy did it for me. And, and then, as they say, the rest became history. After he retired, I was called as the new rector. I want to say age 36 or seven. Oh, um, wow. I can't even remember <laughs> those that, years. Yeah, it but that's awesome. Yeah, okay. yeah, but it was, a, it was a great calling. And, and so we were there well over 35 years. Wow. And yeah. kids? You have kids? Oh, yeah. Four boys. Uh, sadly, one uh, died of, of cancer. Um, oh, sorry. Seven years ago. Yeah, it was tough. Oh, and yeah. actually, that was an aspect of, of my retirement. I just realized sort of where this was going. And um, it was just, it, he ended up living with us the last couple of years at our house, which was absolutely great. Because oh, yes. it, he now talk about TVs. He had one of those big TVs, which we oh, did yeah. have <laughs> in his room. And I just sat next to his bed and we watched tennis and basketball and oh, <laughs> football and yeah. golf, golf, you name the sport. And again, that's what we did. And we talked for, and mm. it, you know, it's something you just yeah. always treasure. Oh, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Well, I'm going to guess there's some grandkids too, maybe. Oh yes. Do you want to <laughs> see pictures or just hear about them? Or what <laughs> yeah. Whichever you want. How many do you have? <laughs> well, actually uh, my wife and I had four boys and the beauty of this story is now one of our boys has three girls. Oh, yes. I love which, that. Which, by the way, he was a pilot in the Marines and flew helicopters. Rough and oh, tough gosh. kind of guy. Yeah. Married a, a Navy nurse. I mean, it's a great story. Uh, but to see him with three girls is just a riot. I mean, yes. That's, <laughs> that's great. awesome. I see, love that. Soft, he's got a soft touch to him. <laughs> yeah, of <laughs> course. He, we didn't know he was there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got uh, uh, two other boys that are with us in Louisville. And um, one has a, a little a four-year-old. Uh, mm. Tiger, tiger, by the tail, boy. Cute. <laughs> He's a great Aww, kid. And then uh, sweet. our other boy has uh, a girl that's now turning thirteen. So Ooh, uh, teenagers, <laughs> good luck, <laughs> good luck, great, and a great young boy. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So we're thrilled. Six of them. That's well, and you guys both have something in common. You both have new puppies. We do. Yeah, have, too. I, we I do have new puppy. puppies. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah, me neither. No, I'm just kidding. Our puppy's great. She's just a terror. Yeah. Um, you, you you mentioned um, your book, uh, 
the the spiritual growth through the witness of James book a couple times because that's your your most recent. Can you talk to us um, about the other books you have as well and just kind of walk us through your sure. history as an author? Well, they've all been uh, spiritual growth, and that's something again that's been always important to me and for me. Um, probably it was in the mid '80s I went off and received spiritual direction through a. Uh, it was then, I don't want to say it was online, it was pre-computer. Yeah. <laughs> I really am dating myself, but, but, you know, we corresponded, put it that way. Yeah. And then we'd go to Washington, D.C. once a quarter for That's this awesome. uh, training. Yeah, it was a three-year program. Uh, so cool. In-depth reading, yeah. And it really, I, I don't want to say I was just hollow on the inside, but again, coming out of my background, I was just not yeah. real uh, understanding of of not just the, the theology uh, and, and, again, the Bible teaching, but it, where does it apply? The application, I guess. Sure, what, right. Uh, was something that was, I'm not, it was new to me. And I, I really wanted to get hold of in a way that, that integrated with me. I mean, it was, yeah. was part of my life. And I'm not just talking to talk. And I'm, I'm not just talking, you know, yeah. and using words that everyone says, hey, that sounds great. Um, so with that, I, I began to really, and I hesitate to say this, learn how to pray. <laughs> no, but, that's, but, you know, that's at great. A, at a deeper, yeah. And, yes, and yeah. the Bible came alive and my faith was real. I mean, all these kinds of things started to work for me in a way that um, <laughs> really was important. The reason for the chuckle is, is people began to learn about this and they would, would approach me for spiritual direction. And yeah. guess what? The church began to grow. <laughs> Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you, God. But guess Amen. what? Then comes the building programs and all that kind of stuff, oh, which yeah. really required prayer yeah. and a whole new ball game. So, but that's <laughs> I'm getting off subject because you want to ask about the the books, which how do I want to say this? After retiring, I did not have a pulpit. Mm. You know, it's not that the church says don't let the door hit you, but when you retire, you leave. Right. Well, that's tough. And by the way, yes. we're in the same city. You know, we have a house here and and grandkids and a dog and all those right. kinds of things. Yes. So roots, roots, and all that is is, is here in Louisville. And um, so I'm doing a lot of supply preaching, but at the same time, I really wanted to continue to communicate. And so I got into speaking through because. By the way, can you tell I like to talk? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're a great communicator. You really, really are. are. But yes. no, I got into speaking through the, the Kentucky chapter of the National Speakers Association. So that's gotten me uh, uh, kind of, uh, oh, oh, again, beyond the church, but spreading the word. Oh, mm. Amen. And by the way, that's where books, I think, are so important. Mm. In yeah. fact, I'm going to be back in Memphis uh, this spring involved in a conference with uh, Christian writers and my topic is uh, writing a writing a book for a generation that doesn't like to read books. Yep. Oh wow. You yeah. Like that title. I that's do. Right. Very much. <laughs> but that's right where we are. Yeah. So, uh, if I can say, Sarah, I'm looking at you. Now. I know. That, <laughs> <You're> gener- <laughs> I feel it. I feel the eyes. But it's also very <laughs> true. Sorry. If you ask me if, what I like to read, nothing. I don't yeah. like to read. It's no, You're not wrong. Yeah. Say, you're absolutely and right. Is, and this is, again, a real loss, I think. But, but, but I won't give you my talk, but <laughs> that comes later. If you want they, to can come ca- they can go to yeah. the conference to get that. Yeah. We'll get you out of Chattanooga <laughs> and you come to Memphis. There you go. But, um, but this first book of mine was, was really based on Peter. Mm, and, uh, I love that. Yeah, and and again, um, his vision, yes. which um, is really uh, one that if, if you follow the character of Peter, I mean, he's in many respects, uh, uh, you know, a, a symbolic uh, archetype, really, for the church. I mean, when you read about Peter, you're reading about ourselves. But mm, I yes. want to walk on water. <laughs> Right. Well, I don't know the man, you know, uh, yeah. all this kind of stuff. I mean, all this is part of part of the creation of his vision uh, that I bring out in in each chapter um, using really Second Peter as, as kind of a framework. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, it, the title of the book is May You Live in Christ, which um, is comes out of and this is a, another long story, but at the at the lowest level of the. St. Peter's and Paul Basilica, as in the Vatican, Mm -hmm. you go under the crypt, there's a place of burial. 
where the belief is, and uh, and there's a lot to go on this, and and the Pope approves, <laughs> but right. it's theoretically the bones of Peter. Right. But prior to seeing all this, and it's one of the holiest spaces, really, uh, in the Catholic Church, but as you get down there, what what's there is graffiti in those days, I mean, writing on the walls, and it was vivatas in Christus, vivatas in Christus, which means may you live in Christ. Mm. Well, you'll find it in some of Peter's letters, but also it's thought to be either a baptismal statement, could have been in the Eucharist, it could be a daily expression as you're mm. now going to your death. Someone mm. shakes hands with you or hugs you and says, Vivitas in Christos. I mean, th- those guys were playing at a level that... Yes. <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't say guys, those <laughs> men those and women. But, folks, you know, I mean, yeah. Anyways, that was their, if you will, mission statement. Mm. That you live in Christ. And by the way, it works for us today. Oh, it does. Um, so, I mean, I could talk all day about that, but that's that book. And then the second book is about St. Paul. And in some respects, it's following in the footsteps of Paul that, that I was able to do on a, a sabbatical in Greece that just is phenomenal. I mean, yeah. to, you know, walk in these real spots. As yeah. In, well, you know, the same thing happens to people when they go to Israel. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's the Sea of Galilee. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. it's not the Ohio River. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, pardon me. But, you yes. know, I mean, it's, it's the real deal. And the yeah. same thing in Greece. I mean, there you are in Corinth. And you go, what? <laughs> right. You know, um, Philippi. I mean, it just goes on and on. Uh, Ephesus. Uh, but with that, um, what, I, what I really approach is the renewal of the mind. Uh, do not be conformed to this world, but mm. be transformed by the renewal of the mind. And one of the teachings that I began to pick up on back, again, back in the mid-80s, is what they call the Lectio Divina, which is the divine word. And what you do is it's an exercise. It came out of Ignatius, really, but it's an exercise to read scripture and find a word, find mm. a phrase, find a verse yeah. that grabs you and go with it. You, know? yeah. you don't have to read the whole, I mean, you can read the whole chapter, but find that, you know, and boy, that's that's been very uh, helpful for me in terms of a guy that likes to talk <laughs> and well, doesn't yeah, that's really great. like to listen and is, you know, looking around all the time for the next thing. Yeah. Stop it. Slow down. Yes. Read. Experience what that word means yeah. for you. you mm-hmm. know? And so here we go. I'm reading this. Uh, Do not be conformed to this world. And I'm thinking, well, I don't want to be a conformist, but what other world is there? Mm. Now, do you want to talk about the kingdom? Yes. yes. Please. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. And that's what brings the renewal of the mind. Is, is, that's is awesome. The kingdom and the kingdom values and the kingdom understanding of King Jesus as ruler of our life. And wow. It just took off. And, yeah. Um, that's so cool. That's yeah. incredible. Well, what about James? Yeah. Oh, that's the third one. The new <laughs> yep, one. So the glad new one. You asked. So glad you asked. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, what we're again, if you recall the, the story with, with me kneeling before that altar, and it says, do the word. And um, it gave me an opportunity to really see the church, um, not the church service. As in, 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 but the church that serves, and this mm. was a, a real um, kind of a breakthrough for me in ways that um, you know I got a, a real uh, calling again to as a minister to equip uh, the church for service. Mm. Um, well, this third book, as I say, uh, it's it's again um, a book that I've I've written. I guess you've got a, here it is. It there, just came yeah. out recently. It's called The Letter to the Church. And, and by the way, it's called The Letter to the Church in the Next Generation. Um, I was going to name it something like a book about James or, <laughs> or, or something. That one like, guy, but, that one guy, James. And, yeah, you know, the, the brother of Jesus or something. But yeah, but the, um, the, I was with working with a publicist, by the way, who's helping me with social media, which, you know, I was a, uh, under a rock prior because i didn't have to do it until i retired right and all of a sudden now that's you know the name of the game yes but uh she was the one that really said you know really what you're doing is writing a letter to the church and uh it's got to do with this next generation yeah and you know i was drinking coffee and i kind of coughed the coffee up yeah that's awesome is. and, and it's yeah. a spiritual witness through james and um i i could go on and on about that story but um 
I don't know if you remember, I think it was just at the turn of the century, the, the 21st century, um, uh, uh, Raymond uh, 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 Brown, the, uh, um, oh, what was it, the Da, Va- uh, da Vinci Code? Mm, mm-hmm. Yes, um, yeah. And uh, that was all the end thing. Yes. But at the same time, they discovered what was considered the ossuary, which are, is a box with the collection of bones of James. Oh. And, and that's a it's, a it's a story in the book you're going to have to read. Yeah, <laughs> yeah read for sure. It. But it's a fraud. <laughs> so I don't oh, want to no. write it for you. But what <laughs> it had on the title of the box, James, brother of Jesus, son of Joseph. I mean, just there it was. And it yeah. was, like, ah, that's it. That's James. That's it it, it know, couldn't be more yeah, clear. Yeah. It couldn't be more clear. And yet <laughs> it's not clear. Uh, right. Because the, the inscription, the box probably was, they did all kinds of carbon dated and like four years of lawsuits and stuff. But but what they did discover was that, you know, the, the box was was legit in terms right. of the dating. But the, the, the inscription seemed to be a forgery. So, seemed to, oh, oh, man. Sorry, sorry to ruin it for you. However, yeah. Spoiler alert, but still. Trilling. Yours truly, back to me. Let's talk about me now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what happened was, was with that... Um, James was very in for a couple of years. Everyone started to read the letter of James, think more about James. Jesus had a brother? Are you kidding me? Well, you know, the tradition, and you've read scripture, there's there's a gaggle of, of kids, uh, brothers and sisters. Right. Um, how can that be? Um, so, again, scholars have all kinds of different theories on this, and it gets very controversial, uh, but... You, what I think the more and more are saying is that James, yes, was a younger brother, but a son of Joseph, um, mm. or could have been a cousin or a stepbrother, you know, all these kinds of things. But Joseph's right. first wife died, married Mary, and then they had Jesus, you know. So along came this bunch of kids with Joseph, and Mary thought... <laughs> What am I supposed to do with all these kids? You know, but <laughs> no, I'm sort of making all this. But but um, the, my writing of James is to call him a living link because mm-hmm. I really see him as the eyewitness. You know, the scholars will say it's not a very Christological letter. If you've ever read James, the letter of James, or spent time with it, right, right, very little mention of Jesus. And and Martin Luther, as an example, said, ah, there's nothing to it. it don't talk enough about Jesus. Every other verse, every other, again, back to Lectio Divina, so much of it is out of the uh, Sermon on the Mount. It is. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. I mean, you, you get all this and you're going, ah. <laughs> so obviously, well, uh, there was some oral tradition going on or some kind of closeness James had with Jesus. Yes. And scholars do agree on this, if you're ready, and this is pretty hot and recent, is that James' letter was probably the first letter in the uh the Christian community. Uh, they're dating at more around 40. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. That's, that's pretty fresh. And that's yeah. pretty hot. That's pretty yeah. hot. And that well, really, that that's what hooked me. And got yeah. Me you like that, yeah. Right. This is the word, you know. And it's oh, right my there. gosh. Yeah. yeah. And well, he, and by it, the way, was walking hand in hand with Jesus the whole mm-hmm. way. Well, yeah. And I can go on and on and on about the book and about the story of James, but it's that's a awesome. fascinating character. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it is written very differently from from Paul's letters, right? Yes. It does just yes. has a just a very different vibe. Yeah, pretty. So good I'm, sh- yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that there's all kinds of controversy. Well, and I love that you've taken like Peter was kind of the 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 working class guy. Yes. You know, he um, uh, what he reveals as he grows is just so spirit filled, right? He hey, couldn't have done me. it. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Leave me alone. Right. right. <laughs> but then you've got Paul who's been to heaven to, you yeah. know, has had this vision and, and he just feels that the, their experiences feel so different. And yes. then even like you said, now with, through the witness of James, you just have this, just a, a whole nother example of the way that the Holy spirit works through people, very different people, very yes. different talents and gifts. Yeah. Um, and like you said, I mean, he James was probably with Jesus for the first thirty years. You know, all there you, you know, go. Doesn't all get the any time. Better. Yeah. yeah, no, that's awesome. Well, who's and- next? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Diane, <laughs> you took you it get- right out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, love that. Well, I'm trying to think I, of who, where you would go next. I mean, maybe well, God, maybe it hasn't been revealed to you yet. No, it has. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. of course good. it has. <laughs> but but uh, again, back with James is when I talk about his witness. Um, the importance, again, like we said, of mentoring, 
and that's that's mm. a real gift that yes. James brings to the church. Um, and that's that, as I say, a story unto itself. The crucifixion, Jesus says to probably it's John, his beloved disciple. He says, "You know, take my mother, mother. This is your son." Right. And with that, um, I mean, it's, it's it's still it almost makes you cry just re- referring. And I'm sorry, I'm talking through it so fast. But but there, uh, John takes Mary back with them. Well, by the way, they're in Jerusalem. James is in Jerusalem. I can't help but think James wanted to say, mother, what's going on? You know, and spent time with his mother as well as John. And that very possibly, and this scholars will say, became like the first Christian community or first Mm. church. Mm. Um, And with that, James continued to mentor uh, primarily the Jewish community into the Christian faith. Uh, through the the resurrection, because he experienced the resurrection of Jesus and could talk about Jesus with the authority like no one else could. Right. And, and so, with with all this said, um, James really I look at as a mentor of that early church, and for us to model some of the uh, characteristics and qualities and gifts, like you all are saying, and competencies that come with with this uh, uh, understanding of being a mentor. Mm, so that's awesome. Next, next book. Well, yeah, no, like no, no. Let's 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 stay <laughs> okay. here with James for just a minute. So, one of the things that as we were communicating back, um, back and forth, uh, we have some questions that we ask. I was wanting to have you define for us what your definition then of spiritual growth. Sure, um, it's in many respects. Obviously, it's not physical. Uh, because I'm shrinking in <laughs> size the older I get. <laughs> I'm no longer six foot three, but right. you know, <laughs> <laughs> no, but <laughs> and I can't dunk anymore. Any that. But so it's not physical, it's not emotional, it's not intellectual. I mean, you know, it's not financial, it's not all the kinds of ways in which we measure uh, growth. Right. Uh, spiritual growth, again, is an understanding, and, and here we go, has mm-hmm. to do with change. Yes, uh, and you know a lot of people want to grow, <laughs> right? But do they do they want to change? <laughs> right. No, so. that's you know, so true. So, uh, <laughs> that's why I drop word, the word change in on the first place. But all that has to do with the transformation and our life in Christ, um, and so therein comes the spiritual growth. It's through obviously the spiritual part. Put it this way, Diana. I'll have uh, young people will say to me, "I'm I'm spiritual, but I'm not religious." Right. You've heard that a million times. 1,000 times, yeah. Okay, and I'll say, you've just heard it a thousand. I've heard it a million. Yeah, fair. <laughs> so, but, but seriously, all these, what I will do say, say to kids is, is to tell me what you mean by I used to just shut it down, but now I say, tell me what you mean by spiritual, much like you're saying to me. And they go off into a million different spirits. Yeah. You know, and, and by the way, there's good spirits and there's bad spirits. Oh, yeah. So oh, you want to be sure. careful with the spiritual part. Well, religion ties the spiritual life together, and that is through the power of the Holy Spirit mm. that relates and unites us to the will of God. So th- this is, again, to me, and I'm starting to preach, but I can't help it. And that's yeah. okay. <laughs> Bring <laughs> it. where the spiritual growth becomes yes. uh, real for us and guides us and leads us into all truth. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> no, that's perfect. Well, so, but you're talking. You so push you, the button, Diane. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> this, is, this is all really great stuff. So, you were talking about mentors and mentorship. Yes. In in your world, as you're as you're being a mentor, do your spiritual these spiritual mentors have to be trained clergy? No, absolutely not. Uh, grandparents. Yeah. <laughs> that, are sitting oh. on the, that are sitting on the pew, you know. And yeah you know, have been there for years and years and years and are probably as soaked in the tradition and the faith of the church as anyone and, you know, have not an axe to grind or anything else except they want to see uh, this faith uh, passed on to the next generation. Mm. And it's, it's, again, an understanding of being able to listen, to ask questions, like my chaplain friend did to me. He said, you know, right. you ask a good question. Yes. Go to seminary. Well, yeah. you know, there's a lot of kids out there, boy, oh, boy, especially after this COVID stuff. Uh, they've been yeah. crushed. Mm-hmm. And uh, 
whether or not they're going to come back to church, you know, there was a lot of people that said, oh, just wait, they'll be back. Or, you know, when they get married, they'll come back. Well, they're not getting married until they're 50 years old now, you know. <laughs> no, I right. shouldn't say that, but, but, but you know, it's, it's later. a change later in life. Yes, yeah. it's a change. And then, um, you know, well, when they have kids, well, maybe they'll have a kid. You know, I mean, it's just, it's a different demographic in time. Mm. And, and our calling is really, again, to equip people mm. with the, the, priority in the place of this new life that can be found in christ oh amen yeah. wow yeah and you're right it, it, it it's this new generation is um i mean i don't want to say I'm smarter it. yeah it's good, oh yeah but, but I, yeah good. i don't know that I, I i was gonna say smarter i, I don't know they're, they're just not willing to take um tradition or well that's my parents church they're just not willing to take all of that right. they they've got to experience it for themselves and you know if they're in a church that's just ritual and you know yes. wrote then it's not yes. it's not uh, piercing the heart no you know to to be in a in a situation where the holy spirit is working every time you're together with other believers is just right. so powerful mm-hmm. and yeah. so much of this generation as you well know um they probably on their in the palm of their hand <laughs> have more information in that phone. It's yeah. True. I mean, I, I, in my days, I used to have to go to a library. Right. Remember? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I went to a library remember. once. Let me talk to you. <laughs> Just <again>. kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but, and you had to check out a book. And yeah. pay an overdue fine for the last five books you forgot to return. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think you've ever been to a library. I have to. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> this is mother and daughter now. And That's more. right. <laughs> <laughs> but here, here's the, the line that I, I find is that this has to do with information that they're getting, but what we're talking about is formation, yeah. and that's what's lacking, and, yeah. and that's really the calling that I find in mentors today. Wow. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you talked about earlier um, about gifts and, and equipping. You used the word equip, which got uh-huh. me excited because that's in, it's in our mission statement, um, and if for those of you who don't know, for our listeners and for you who may not know, we we started a ministry um, during the pandemic that, and and we believe that we have this beautiful opportunity to have a personal relationship with with our heavenly Father and with our Savior, and and through that relationship and through learning about each other and and growing spiritually towards towards Christ, we get the opportunity to collaborate yeah. with Him. Yes. And that's why we call, uh, that's why our ministry is called Project Brickworks, is we believe that each of us gets to build our brick in collaboration with God for him as he, that he can use to build his kingdom. Uh-huh. And so that's, it's very imagery. And I'd love to say that we came up with it, but N.T. Wright will yeah, give him a shout we'll out. Give him credit. Uh, really? But, uh, yeah, really. He's an Anglican. He's an Anglican. I, I yes, do, he we is. know. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> uh, so we, we, and we love N.T. Wright and my dad and you especially. Read you read him. Oh, yeah. And my dad is a, is a huge. Yes fan huge fan um but so anyway so we 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 stole that from him but anyway that's just kind of <laughs> where we base it on that and then we grew it so anyway but we we believe that we are equipped with talents and gifts from god that we can use to build this brick and it's it's in everyday life it's not just in your in your vocation in your job it's and it's in the ways that you volunteer yes. at the church it's the way you volunteer in your community yes. that maybe isn't church related it's just right. how god has called you to serve those around you. So anyway, that was so long winded, but all that to be said is we love to name it. We love to encourage our listeners to name their talents and gifts. So we always encourage our guests to do the same, always giving God the glory for those. So we would love to hear from you what you think your spiritual gifts and then also your talents are that God gave you. Well, (laughs) with that said, I know it's very humbling. Mm, uh, it is, you know, yes. To begin to talk about uh, yes. gifts. Absolutely. And there's almost a, a not paranoia, but a, a, a tendency on my part when I start talking about myself, which, by the way, you can tell I love to do. <laughs> there's, there's a side that says, be quiet mm, and yeah. listen. And uh, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> or, you know, listen to me. Yeah. Or listen mm. to him. Yeah, right. for sure. With Jesus. Uh, I mean, those cover the transfiguration. Those those are the kinds of experiences that, again, present me with the gifts is when I um, really can be open to hearing a word from the Lord or, mm-hmm. uh, Amen. and understanding 
of where God might be calling me. For instance, for years, um, I struggled with the idea of a call. You remember I said I had questions? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. And, and Absolutely. Seminary was great, but it still didn't answer all the questions. Right. You know, now what am I supposed to do? You know, and, I, right. and when you graduate from seminary, you get what they call a master's in divinity. Yep. Do you know anyone who has mastered divinity? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It, it doesn't work. Right. Yeah. Yeah, good luck with that. Right. That's funny. I learned that quickly. Um, and I can tell stories about that as well. But but I think when, one of the things that I did pick up on, certainly when I went through spiritual direction, as well as when I came out and, and began the leadership of a parish, was to follow me. Mm. And that was my calling. It's as simple as that. Jesus says, follow me. Yeah. yeah. To be able to respond to that call still 50 years later is, is I would call, you know, um, if not a gift, at least a, an aspect of um, a strength that, mm. yes. that, that allows my faith um, to communicate yeah. and, and relate one to For another. sure. Well, and then it plays out, it, uh, the word that came to mind for me when you were saying that is perseverance. Right. Absolutely. So one Absolutely. of the things one of the things that we've talked about over the past few seasons is just this idea that God has prepared good works for us mm-hmm. to do in advance for you know for His glory, uh, for our joy as well. And so you know, there's things like you're a great storyteller, you're a great communicator. Well, thank you. you know, those aren't things that that you um, that, and probably a teacher. I mean, you know, as, yeah. as a pastor for all of these years, um, God gave you those. So for us to name it just gives him glory. Yeah. Yeah, that's the way to say it. That's much better. Right? But yeah, yeah, yeah. The old ego, you know, it's something about the ego. Oh, for it sure. Is. Oh, I get it. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> I and, am and, somebody. <laughs> well, and we've, we we have we just had to learn that the that fact. Uh, one of the things that that we deal with is that Sarah's an actress and she's just a really good actress. You know, she didn't she, now she has gone to school and and she has you know, honed her craft, but God gave her that ability to communicate through storytelling. Mm-hmm. He didn't give it to me. I'm okay with that. I, I, I'm really good. Okay. With that. I don't, <laughs> I, I don't want, I don't want to do, I wouldn't want to be in a play and that, those kinds of things. Sure. Like, I can't remember all the lines, but he did give me a gift of administration. So I know that I can keep things organized sure. and, you know, it's, it's just, it's great when we're all using, right. Uh, first Corinthians, I think it's 12 or, 12 or 13, somewhere in there. We're, somewhere in there. So the where it talks about our the body of Christ, yeah. right? We're all yeah. different different parts, and we're working together in that collaboration with God. Amen. So, yeah. yeah. Well, just, just, just to name a couple of yours, you know, just you're really a good storyteller. Oh, and an excellent communicator. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Sorry. It. I'm just going to name that. I'm going to name that one for you. Stop it some more. Yeah. Stop it some more. The other one I, I think I'd like to name for you is is – there's a there's an encouragement and just a charisma about you. You are very um you exude the Holy Spirit is is the way I would phrase it. Yeah. Um but you're just fun to talk to yeah, and you're engaging. Um and not everyone who's a good communicator <laughs> do I want to talk to for an extended period of time. <laughs> but I don't feel that way about you. It was. It, it's in there. It's in Most there somewhere. Definitely. Most definitely. No, that's no, awesome. It works both ways, obviously. You all are great. Oh, well, thank you. Well, so um, we're doing things a little bit different this season. Um, and we're we're really just, you know, this whole thing is about bringing people to know Jesus. Yes. Hunt, that's it. That's the point of all of this. And so um, we would love to ask you, what if, if you could share one thing about Jesus with our listeners, any one thing, what would it be? Well. Um, <laughs> no pressure. No, no pressure. Um, <laughs> But again, I would, and, and, and again, part of my hesitation is because the misinterpretation that comes with this word, but the, the, my king, mm. my ruler, my lord, my yes. governor, yeah. <laughs> he's in charge. <laughs> he's king in Jesus. Control. You know, yeah. it's, it's this kind of understanding of Jesus that um, he is the center of my life. Mm. Uh, it's in I, one of the books I, I talk about the difference between having a self-centered life and a life that's centered in Christ. And mm. that's not just a play on words, but it's, a, it's, it's again, a pivot or a transformation that yeah. occurs through the power of the Holy Spirit that when you said, you know, all praise and glory goes to God. Amen. You know? Amen. And so that's where I can accept <laughs> some of the things you all said without turning red, you know, right. Because <laughs> right. I can 
send it right up there. Absolutely. And that's that's where I leave it. Not leave it, but that's where it begins with me in terms of my relationship. He's not my buddy. It's not just about being friends. It's I mean, though, the, all those words are important, but right. yeah. he calls the shots. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Oh yes, this has this has been great. Oh my gosh, this was we are so fun. So glad to have met you. Yes. Where can people connect with you? Well, um, several ways, but for your listeners only. <laughs> <laughs> we love that. <laughs> no, I do have a landing page, and okay. this is again. It came from. It wasn't well. It was made into a book, but it was uh, not necessarily. It was for the parish. It was on in honor of my. I think it was twenty fifth. Uh, anniversary in the priesthood but um it was a collection of different um uh newsletters articles snippets and okay. sermons you know greatest hits right <laughs> yes kind of yeah and it's, and so it's and what it does is um i had a, a person break it down into four sections so that here again it has to do with vision with renewal you with me? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Witness in chapter four is on mentoring, or not chapter yeah. four, week four. So it's broken down into four weeks. It's a journal yeah. where you can read these little snippets and then write something as well. And it's a download that's for free. Very okay. cool. It's, it's www.robint, as in Tom Jennings, J E N N I N G S, dot com. And then there's a slash guided reflection. Okay. And okay. That's a lot. But if if you can follow that, um, maybe at the end of your notes or something, that would yeah. be a place where they could turn to right away. And then, you know, if they leave their email, then that's one way we certainly can touch base. Well, so I um, neglected to follow up on my previous question. Who's next? Oh, well, I just I, I took a group to Ireland and oh. we just got back a week or a week ago. That's so beautiful still, there. I, it really was. And it was the end of September. And oh. uh, n- visitors were were gone for the most yep. part so here we are uh on the cliffs of moor you know i mean just yes. around, oh, yes. from dublin on and um the the history of the place but also the religion and the mm-hmm. uh, w- i could go on and on with story after story in terms of the thin spaces and places and all of that kind of thing that we we all experience as a group but this um they call it celtic spirituality but it's it's christian uh, but what it brings is a freshness and an awareness to the way in which God has been revealed to our life and is present to us in everyday life. And I think that's one of the things that I want to pick up on and keep writing, uh, which is another dimension to uh, our our spiritual life. Yeah, that's awesome. That's so cool. You're doing hey, such John. great, such yeah, no, absolutely. You're doing um, such great kingdom work. Yes, it's oh. it's very cool to get to talk to you about about all that God's doing in your life and, and how you just kind of laid it at his feet and you're just listening and, and following, following. Yeah. yeah. We love that. Follow Jesus. Amen. There you go. Well, it's been a delight. Oh my Thank gosh. Thank you so much yes. for your time It's a today. good word. I would, I would concur with that yeah. word. It's a delight. Uh, we're, we are so grateful for your wisdom and for mm-hmm. sharing with us today. And, um, just the, thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Diane. All right. Sarah, Have a good one. All right. Yeah. Same to y'all. God bless you. Uh, bye-bye. Thank you guys so much for watching our podcast with Robin. This podcast is made possible through generous listeners and friends like you, and we are so very grateful to all of our supporters. If you would like to sponsor an episode, you can head over to the collaborationconversation.org and click sponsor an episode. For more information on Project Brickworks, visit us online at projectbrickworks.org. Subscribe to our newsletter or text BRICK to 55498 to get the latest news and updates. We love y'all. Be blessed, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.